What's up everyone? Welcome back to Snack Time. My name is Ben and today's video we're going to take a look at a cool little uh, uptime monitor called Uptime Kit. This is going to be a very short video. There's not a ton to cover here. The installation is very simple. We're not going to make this internet facing because there's really no multi-user uh, authentication happening. So you're probably just going to want to run this on your local network and, and not expose it to the internet. So let's do this. Let me just show you around real quick. Uh, not a lot of options, but uh, it's very, very effective. And honestly, what do you really need an uptime monitor? Uh, so uh, when we're looking at the main screen here, we have a couple of different ways we can monitor sites. Uh, we do have um, you know, a little bit of st uh, statistics down here at the bottom. You know, did I experience any sort of downtime? I can view uh, history so I can see when, what um, when our system did reach out, um, what was the response time in milliseconds? Was it up or was it down? What time did that happen? Uh, so it does keep that um, on record. Uh, let me show you how we add a new monitor too. So there's a couple of different ways we can monitor. We can monitor like the, for like uh, for, uh, keeping an eye on a website. We have HTTP, HTTPS. Uh, we also have a DNS, making sure that the domain resolves to an actual IP address. Uh, and then lastly, we have the trusty old ICMP ping, uh, just making sure that, hey, are you there? You are? Cool. Awesome. Thanks for letting me know. Uh, I set up all three of these. Uh, this is the uh, HTTP monitoring. Uh, it says operational. Awesome. A little bit slow in the response time. That's OK. Uh, then we have DNS. And that's just making sure that snack time resolves to an IP address again. And then we have our ping and this is going out to Google, letting us know that everything is hunky dory. Uh, not too much really to look at here. Um, if there was downtime, it would be recorded here. Uh, that kind of like separates it out from just this list of history. So you're not really looking through all of that. So you can at least pick out what the when the downtime occurred. Um, from there, we can edit it, um, just make changes. Same thing as if we were setting it up and we can pause monitoring, resume it and then delete uh, up here at the top. We have our uptime statistics. So uh, on average, we have 100 percent uptime. Uh, let's add a site that has no uptime. So let's add uh, Bob. Dot, Bob dot com is probably <laughs> uh, Bob one, two, three. Let's see. HTTP uh, Bob blah, three, .com. and we'll add that. And in a second here right now, it's just collecting data. So assuming that that is not an actual uh, domain, uh, it should tell us here in a second that it is down. Uh, while we're waiting, I did want to point out that this does have a really cool uh, API as well. So if you are looking to integrate an uptime monitor with a third party program or just roll that into maybe like an N8N automation, uh, then this might be a good solution for you, especially uh, if you don't want to reinvent the wheel. Uh, so here we have a downtime right there. Uh, let's see here. So we can view downtime and don't think it's really recorded yet because it's never been up. Uh, but we it did affect our statistics as far as our uptime and it's pointed out that we do have one site down. So that's kind of cool. Uh, you do have light mode and dark mode. Ah, there we go. Nice blinding light for you. Uh, but that's pretty much about it. Let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to show you how to install it. Uh, for this, we are not going to be using Portainer. We're going to be using our trusty old uh, terminal window uh, because this is a project that does not have an image. It does require you to build it, but I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, so I am going to get my terminal window ready here and should be good to go here. I'm going to drag this guy over here. Just we're going to use him in just a little bit, uh, but let's first check out the GitHub page. Uh, you'll see the link down below in the description. Uh, again, very, very easy peasy. Uh, we are going to just kind of take a quick look here. If you scroll down, we'll have the features that are implemented currently. Uh, we also have um, installation instructions, uh, which we are pretty much going to be doing here, except we're not going to be using this uh, NPM install. We're just going to do the, the Docker compose and build. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, but uh, if you are interested in the API, 
uh, that will that information will be right here. So these are all the different ways that you can uh, gain access to the API. There's no keys or anything. Again, we're not making this internet facing. This is just going to be for your internal use. So uh, not really a reason for you to authenticate. All right, let's go ahead and, and sign in to our server. So I'm going to bring that up and I'm going to copy my password over here. And let's go ahead and sign in. I'm going to do SSH. I'm going to sign in as root. Please don't do that. Have another username to use. I'm just using this because it is my test machine. And we're going to go ahead and paste the password and sign in. All right, now we are ready to start. I'm going to just navigate to the temp folder. All right, and now we are going to go ahead and get this repo here. So I'm just going to click back here. I'm going to copy this URL and then I'm going to go back to my terminal window and we're just going to do a simple little command here. And in fact, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. I don't know if you can see it, but just in case, uh, there you go. We're going to get clone space and then the URL of the repository. Uh, sorry. So once that has uh, cloned that, it's cloned it into the uh, into the uptime kit folder. So they're going to change directory to the uptime kit folder. I'm going to go and show you the Docker compose file. You can also view that from the GitHub page. So looking at this, we can see that it is going to be building the back end uh, from that folder, from the information in there. It's going to expose the port 3000, and this, I believe, can also be used for the API. Uh, there's really no reason for us not to expose this port because we are building this on a private server. Uh, you can change the port if you want to, up to you. We're going for the node environment is going to be production. Our time zone is UTC. If you want to change this, this is going to be using the um, the basically the PHP time zones. Uh, so if you want to change that, all you have to do is open up Google and we're just going to do PHP time zone and we'll just list these supported time zones. We'll find the one that, that maybe we're in uh, let's see, I'm East Coast, so I would be probably using this America uh, slash New York. I believe that's going to be the time zone that we're going to be using for this. But you don't have to change it if you don't want to. It's, it's not really that important. It's really just kind of up to you. All right, so moving on, we are building the front end from the information in the front end folder. Uh, that depends on the back end running. And we're going to be running this on port 5173. That's going to be the port that you are going to go to in order to um, access the web UI. So if you want that to be something different, just change this 5173 to whatever you want. Uh, it's going to be forwarding that traffic to port 80. And then we have our environment variable for the front end, just referencing the local host on port 3000 so it knows how to access the back end. Uh, we're also going to create some networks and bridge mode, and we're going to create a volume for our backend data. So all the stuff that you would typically do with Portainer, uh, except Portainer, you could build these if you wanted to, but it's just kind of a big pain in the ass. Uh, so, you know, up to you. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and do this. Uh, let's go ahead and, and, and build this uh, Docker Compose file. We're going to go Docker and then space Compose, and then we're going to do up, and then we're going to do dash D for detached mode. And this will basically build this for us and then bail out and let us continue about our day. All right, so this is going to take just a second to build, especially if you have never done this before. Uh, it's going to create all the images. Uh, so we're going to just kind of chill here for a second. And ah, look at that. We're all done. Magic. Maybe it was because uh, the images were already built. <laughs> uh, yours may take a little bit longer. And if it does, that's all right. 
Uh, we can view the status if we want to. Uh, you can do that either through the, the terminal window here. So we can do Docker PS and we'll see that we have our, our front end running and as well as our back end. Uh, and it's going to be that, that 5173. Don't know if, if you can see that. Uh, here's our port information. That's right there. We got our uh, listing on any uh, IP address at 5173, forwarding that to port 80. Let's go ahead and try that. Let's head on over to our um, site here. Okay, there we go. Yeah, here's our URL. And this is a fresh build, so there's no monitor set up quite yet. Uh, but to add one, a very easy peasy. I'm uh, just going to add, let's add google.com, HTTPS, and google.com. There you go. Uh, like I said, very short video, a very easy project to set up, and but it looks pretty. It's functional, and if you're just setting up um, some uptime monitoring and you need uh, either a pretty UI or a uh, functional API, uh, might want to give this a shot. All right, guys, I think that pretty much wraps it up. Um, as you can see in my background, I am moving, uh, so everything's kind of chaotic. I, I don't have the pretty lights up right now, but uh, hopefully in the next video, you'll see my new studio and it may hopefully look uh, a little prettier. Um, cross your fingers. <laughs> All right, you guys take it easy. If you have any questions, comments, leave them down below. Otherwise, definitely encourage you to subscribe. Maybe send me a thumbs up, whatever you want to do. You guys take it easy.